What's up guys, welcome out to another video. I have a little bit of a different one for you today. I I had a script for it, but it wasn't really me. I started reading it and I was like, eh, this, this feels kind of weird. So let's just jump into free play and we'll talk about it. The question came to my mind, you know, what sets apart the best of the best offensive players from the rest, right? The game's been out for like nine years now and Rocket League offense is as good as it's ever been. Back wall dribble as long as he's in control of the ball. He should be in good shape. There's the pogo for the fans in the final moments. The double pogo! Oh. Because as offense improves, the players force the defense to improve. And then there's this vicious cycle where offense just keeps getting better. And so on. So, now, with Rocket League offense, we could be talking about team strategies, passing plays... Uh, boost management, bumps. There's so many things when it comes to Rocket League offense. But I mainly, in this video, want to focus on solo outplays. Ceiling, Atomic and Chronic collide. But now Jack gets it out. And Daniel flipping the play on Ooh, its head. Wait, the what is Daniel doing? The what? The Daniel! Daniel! Are you hero! kidding me? Play from Daniel. He half flips into an air dribble into a. Are you kidding me, bro? That was one of the best shots I've ever seen Daniel in an overtime. Those mechanical skills and strategies that a single player can work on to at some point in their matches just take over the game and score a goal. You know, whether it's. 2v2 or 3v3. Granted, obviously, every offense in 1v1 is solo offense, but it still applies there. But whether it's 2v2 or 3v3, you know, what are the meta or most advanced things that players are doing right now to improve their chances of scoring goals? Now, to analyze this question or to get at the heart of this question, I decided to find or identify four of the best offensive players in the world again i'm not talking shooting accuracy or team play necessarily although these players are very good at that too i am mostly talking about just the beastly solo outplays to get past two or three defenders with the 100 boost in the ball and i could have grabbed multiple players from a given region but I decided to spread it out and grab one player from each of the four primary regions in Rocket League today which are North America Europe South America and the Middle East I would say in terms of skill so for North America I'm gonna be analyzing LJ now for any of these regions you could argue that there's a better player or a different player that I could have grabbed but you know for sake of time I'm just grabbing one from each region, and I think you'd have to at least admit that all four of these guys are just absolute monsters when it comes to offense. So, for NA, I chose LJ. For Europe, I chose Zen. For the Middle East, I chose Naupo. And for South America, I chose Yan. Now, how am I going to go about doing this? Well, I wanted to accomplish two separate goals. One is identify their tendencies you know what types of shots are they going for and then i wanted to use that to motivate a training routine or some sort of training pattern that any player could implement right and if they practice long and hard enough and got enough sleep in between then eventually that player could pull off some of the same moves that these four players are pulling off in in both ranked and in rlcs now, before we talk about each individual's tendencies, I want to give a little bit of a description of how I went about analyzing these players. Ideally, I would have grabbed 10 to 20 replays for each player and just followed their POV and you know noted down their tendencies and identified what types of plays they're going for in terms of solo offense. But for sake of time, I kind of did the reverse. Instead, I listed out as many advanced solo offensive skills as I could and then I went into highlight videos for each player and kind of tracked 
which of the skills those players are utilizing for their most clipped shots. And as a disclaimer, I did not include like triple reset, quadruple reset, or like specific types of shots. Um, because all four of these players go for double, triple resets at times. And there's just too many potential types of shots they can go for that I had to limit it to something. And so I limited it to more general categories. And, and you can see the categories here in this spreadsheet. You can tell that they're not super specific, right? Fast double tap. I'm not saying you have to uh, go off a certain part of the backboard or the ceiling, right? It's just faster than you know, we've seen in the past, like really hard hit to the backboard. Uh, late reset, right? A lot of players will go get the reset right at the start of their air dribble and hold on to it or go, go for multiple. But I've noticed that a lot of these players, especially Zen or Naupo would go for like a reset at the very end of their play with less than 10 boost closer to the goal. Creative backboard setup, so not just banging it to the backboard, but maybe getting a flip reset off the backboard or banging it to the uh, the waterfall or the curve of the top of the backboard, things like that. Aerial catches. I would define an aerial catch as the ball is a few car lengths above the ground before the player goes to try to start the air dribble or potentially a flip reset. Um, and so on. So we have 10 shots, 10 types of shots. And then as I was watching the videos, I had to add in the musty flick. All of these players go for musties all the time, especially LJ. And uh, a lot of times it's used to generate power on low boost, uh, but it apparently is a meta mechanic, and and I'm gonna just gonna loop in all sorts of musties into that, right? Whether it's the full 360 musty, the original type of musty, or a breezy. What I did was I w I tried to watch 10 to 15 minutes of each player, and there is some crossover, right? Like let's say Zen, one of his most famous shots is to set up that ceiling. Pinch double tap. By Staco, the double demo comes in on the back line in favor of Vitality. Zen pinching oh, high with the second. Oh. He smashes it home and he is a smashing player. You can have all the play, you can have all the possession, but as soon as Zen gets the 100 oh. boost and goes to the ceiling, you're in big trouble. So if it's, a, if it's a ceiling pinch, it gets included as a ceiling pinch. If the pinch comes off really fast to the backboard and he doubles it, it's also a fast double, right? Uh, or let's say, you know, I think Yan had a, had one where he goes for a flip reset, it bounces into the backboard, and then he must deflicks it. So, right, so that's a creative backboard and a must deflick. So there is crossover. So this doesn't represent, you know, 72 unique shots. It just it represents 72 total observed times that at least one of these mechanics was used. Okay. And so... I divided the amount of times I saw the type of shot from the given player by the total, and we can kind of get a feel for their tendencies, right? Again, these are highlight videos, so it's not necessarily representative of every of what they always go for in ranked, but it is representative of their hardest mechanics that they go for to get around the best defenders, I would say, in terms of solo outplays. So all of them across the board love to go for fast doubles. I think it was Waitin talked about this in a video a couple years ago. It's like relearning the double tap entirely. It's so difficult. But at the same time, you can immediately see how it's entirely possible to get consistent. If players just realize how far they are from perfecting them, I truly believe laser double taps will become commonplace in pro gameplay sooner rather than later. When you want to set up a backboard double tap, your, your initial hit into the backboard it needs to be really hard nowadays or else it's just going to get cleared or controlled by the other team. So I don't think it's a mystery as to why all these players love uh, fast doubles. Let me bring this back over here for you guys so you can see which shot we're talking about. 
Naupo and Zen specifically love, and Yan, they love those fast double taps. Now, late resets, all of them like to use late resets. And I'm going to define a late reset like you're nearing the goalie box with less than 10 or 12 boost, right? It's at the end of an aerial play, and they just sneak in and grab another reset. Um, very effective, and it's very hard to do. I'm, uh, For me, you know, I'm not super mechanical, but I can do a thing or two. <laughs> I usually like to grab the reset towards the beginning of my aerial if I'm going to go for something, or I have boost, right? Like, I have boost to adjust my car to the ball in the reset. But when it gets really difficult is when you have to set it up perfectly to where you, when you have no boost, you can still land that reset. Creative backboard attempts. This is Yan's favorite shot from the things I could see, right? He goes for creative backboard, like pushing it into the into the waterfall. I saw one where he did a flip reset into the backboard and then got another reset off of it. It's just incredible stuff. But all of them, over 10% of the shots included something of this nature um aerial catches zen and lj love to catch the ball in the middle of an of the air so right the ball's bouncing up and they meet the ball at the perfect speed to keep the control right that that glue that keeps the ball to them and then they go for an air dribble oh my god you now I did not see as many corner reads, sidewall reads, and ceiling pinches as I would have expected. I know these are incredibly difficult shots to defend, but I think they're also just rarer, right? They, they require a certain situation that allows for it, right? The ball needs to be going a certain speed for the shot, the ensuing shot to actually uh, be dangerous. And so you can't just create them out of nowhere like some of these other shots. But Zen, you know, one of his favorite shots in RLCS is to do that ceiling pinch double tap. He's pulled off, I think, three at the very highest level now. Um, so ceiling pinches into backboard reads, that's super high level stuff. And ceiling pinches just straight on net often get saved. So you got to be creative. Uh, full fields, all these players are very controlled with their full fields. Typically, a full field will end up looking like... Uh, a couple touches of an air dribble oh sorry they would they bring the ball up the back wall pre-flip to give it a little bit of momentum without using boost and then a couple touches of an air dribble and then as they're passing midfield they will get the reset and keep going yeah, from there let daniel get some space because daniel's the one that's like getting all the boost and it's just like really going ham if we yeah. see lj score here though oh, wow. you know i'm oh not gonna gosh. complain you know what <laughs> randy shows what you know LJ oh. busting out a flip reset coast to coast. <laughs> does it touch ground though? If it touches ground, it doesn't count. Oh, it no. doesn't. Pre flips, a way to save boost, right? You're coming off the wall, pre flip into the ball, and then you can start boosting. Uh, this is essentially every everybody GC2 uh, and up needs to know how to do this for basic air dribble setups. Um, but also can be used for redirect shots and things like that, which is not as much of a solo play type thing. But it's a way, great way to save your boost. Um, creative ceiling setups. Zen is the master of creative ceiling setups, right? He, he'll, from a ball that's floating in the air, he will push it into the ceiling and then get a reset. Or he'll get his reset to push it into the ceiling. Or he'll pinch it up to the ceiling and follow up. It's just insane from Zen. Um... And then the musty flick. LJ loves the musty flick of all sorts. But Naupo does it as well. Especially a musty flick into the backboard for a double. Or a musty flick at the very end after you've got your reset. It's a way to generate a lot of power on low boost and low momentum. So if I were to narrow these down into five mechanics that I think you should be working on to elevate your offense towards being somewhat close to what these guys are at it's going to take more than just one video and a couple days of practice right it's going to take hundreds of hours thousands of hours but if i were to distill it down into five things that you could just work on every day well we'll call it six because i think musty flicks are easy to practice hard to master easy to practice so musty flick will be number six but the other five uh we'll take all these middle things 
and uh, we'll hide them. I think these are the six things that you can see it's the tendencies of these most advanced players are to go for these types of plays all the time. Fast double taps, late resets, creative backboard setups, aerial catches, creative ceiling setups, and musty flicks. And what I'm going to show you is a training pack that I made. Not just a training pack. It's a free play routine and a training pack. And I kept it to those two things so that any player can work on these. You don't have to have uh, Steam custom maps or anything like that. A free play routine and a training pack that you can spend 30 minutes on every day and level up your skills for offensive solo plays. Welcome back to Free Play, guys. Before I start talking about any of this, I will say, if all you do is jump into ranked every day, or unranked, and you never touch free play or training or custom maps, you definitely can improve, and you will improve over time. But your improvement will not be as efficient as if you took the time to isolate different skills to work on in free play and custom training. Now, my philosophy is that the best way to approach training is a way that's fun for you, right? If you're not having fun, why play the game? So while I will recommend a specific method of training that I know works for me and some people that I've met along my Rocket League career, make any adaptations you need to it that keep it fun for you. Even if it's slightly less, you know, quote, optimal or efficient, right? At the end of the day, playing two hours of Rocket League suboptimal efficiency is better than just hopping on for 10 minutes trying to be efficient and getting bored or frustrated. So, well, I should say it's better for your Rocket League progression, not necessarily your mental health. <laughs> but uh, mental health aside, here's how I would recommend getting better at these things we just discussed about Zen and LJ and Naopo and Yan. The first thing I would do when you log into the game is get into free play. Devote 10 minutes to just doing whatever you want in free play. Just get your hands warmed up. Throw on a couple songs you like. Throw on a podcast. It's, in my opinion, the best way to warm up is just to vibe in free play. Now, I say only 5 or 10 minutes because... I personally don't think it's best to have too much just unstructured time if you want to work on specific mechanics. And that's what we're talking about here. We're working on offensive solo outplay mechanics. So after that five or ten minutes of warm up, change gears a little bit. You know, maybe you gotta go change a preset or put on a, a more hype song or something. But change gears from doing whatever you want in free play like like I am now to trying to be speedy, right? One thing that sets these offensive masterminds apart from other players is how quickly they can do things, how quickly they can read the play and the ball. So start banging the ball around the field and try to get follow-up touches. Try to keep your momentum, use power slide. Anything that causes you to read the play faster while you're moving faster will actually help with the that fundamental principle of, of the fast double taps as well as uh, creative setups, right? If you can read the play faster than your opponents, you're gonna have a leg up on them. Now, you're not necessarily always gonna zoom around like this in a game, but for free play purposes, it is important to kind of let go of that, whatever it is that's holding you back from being a fast player and uh, take five or ten minutes to zoom around and go for double taps, go for sidewall reads. Keep your car's momentum going. Try not to slow the play down too much. Just keep going, going, going. Obviously, this is going to be hard, and I'm not very good at it. I'm giving you kind of an example right now, but you're going to miss the ball a lot, and you're going to have a lot of touches that are weaker than you thought they were going to be. And now we're looking at about 20 minutes of free play. So after 20 minutes of free play, for the purposes of this video and working on these mechanics, 
I would recommend downloading the pack that I just made. Okay, it's called Solo Outplays. I guess I need to upload it. There we go. There's the code. Solo Outplays. I'll put the code in the in the description. And there are so many training packs. So use this training pack in conjunction with ones you already like. But this one hones in on those six skills we just talked about, right? Fast doubles, late resets, musty flicks. Let's see if I can remember them all. Creative backboard setups, aerial catches, and creative ceiling setups, okay? So I'll talk to you guys about my thought process behind the structure of each shot. And then I'll mute my mic and I'll just give you a couple minutes of how I approach the pack. You can kind of see the stuff I go for. But at a high level, the first shot sends the ball over your head, and this is mainly to work on double taps, okay? I will say with every shot, make sure you hit the correct button to mirror them so you can work on both sides of the field, not just one. The second shot gives you another double tap setup, but this time it's a little slower and in front of the net, so you could also go for a creative backboard setup the third shot allows you a little bit more creativity because it forces you to the wall, which opens up the possibility of a corner read, a backboard, fast backboard setup, a creative ceiling setup, a creative backboard setup. Um, but again, fast double touch type plays. We're not really looking at the controlled aerials and flip resets yet. Now this shot, and the next one so both of these shots just pop the ball up above you so you can work on aerial catches and air dribbles and you can work on late resets at the very end of the play you could work on ceiling setups and you can work on creative musty flicks at the end of the play or even at the beginning of the play so while we kind of take a step away from the fast double taps with these two shots and allow you a little bit of a slower play more control uh, which I'm not going to say it's any easier, but it's it's pretty fun. You get a lot of creativity, and you can, it kind of opens up the field a little bit with these. This one throws the ball in front of the net again, but a little bit more off the backboard, so we can work on creative ceiling and backboard setups. This is similar to shots four and five, but it forces you to the wall. We don't want to just work off of the ground. We want to be comfortable coming off the wall. So this works on aerial catches, and anything that you can do towards the net, such as late resets and musty flicks after the catch, but specifically coming off the wall. Now, number eight and nine, the ball is set up the same way, but the car is on either side of the ball. And this helps you work on full field plays. And I know we didn't see too many full fields among the shots made by the, the four masters, but a full field play requires such a combination of mechanics that it's really good to practice. It requires pre-flips and air dribbles and flip resets and you can do all sorts of things like go to the ceiling and whatnot. So a lot of creativity to be had among the full field plays. And number 10 is a very common situation where the ball gets bounced out towards you. You just picked up a big boost and you have the full field to work with. You know, you could just bang it and go for a, some sort of double. You can control it. You can go for a ground dribble setup, musty flick. Essentially, this last one lets you work on pretty much anything that you can imagine up. Okay, so I'll mute my mic now and I'll go through the pack for two or three minutes and let you guys just observe how I would approach it. Don't judge me. I am nowhere near the capabilities of the players that we've been talking about this whole video. But I'll take my own advice and I'll use the pack for a few minutes in between my free play sessions to work on specific mechanics.
Okay. Well, I would recommend spending 10 to 15 minutes in this training pack for every 20 to 30 minutes that you spend in free play. And you can think of your training in tiers or or levels, right? A custom training pack does not require you to do as much. You have less responsibility on the ball in a custom training pack than you do in free play. And similarly, you have less responsibility in free play than in a game. And what I mean by responsibility is like you are required to control your boost and the ball more in a game because you have defenders and limited boost. And so if you want to think of it as levels, uh, for every you know, 10 minutes you spend in a custom training, you should spend 20 to 30 minutes in free play. And then for every 20 to 30 minutes in free play, make sure you're getting in two, three, four, maybe five games. And you don't have to jump right into ranked, right? If you're practicing something, let's say you're practicing this double tap. If you're practicing something in a custom training pack, right you can also go practice in free play but you can also take another step up from there without jumping into ranked you can practice it on bots you can practice it in casual right make sure anything that you can do in free play you're practicing either on bots or in casual or in an actual game so that you don't stagnate and only develop you know unlimited boost no defender type skills uh, right if you're a freestyler, you know, that's different but for competitive offense You want to be getting as many op opportunities to implement these things in a game as possible So I think if you're gonna spend 30 minutes with this training method where you do 20 minutes in free play then 10 minutes in a training pack. I would say Either go try to hit those specific mechanics in casual or against bots or jump into ranked before you hit up the training again. Make sure you get a couple games in between your training sessions. And every once in a while, just take a break from it all, right? Your brain learns more while it's sleeping off things, while it's recovering from the uh, stimulus than it does during the actual stimulus. So it's better to practice this for 30 to 45 minutes every day for like a year than it is to just every once in a while spam it for eight hours. Okay, so be consistent, have fun, and come back to the channel for the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.